Welcome back everyone to this Developing with OpenXR series. Today we're going to be creating our first OpenXR application, which is the Kudai OpenXR. The topics that we're going to be tackling today is having a closer look at that application and runtime negotiation, just so we know what actually happens behind the scenes and we get a better appreciation of what the code does. Then we'll be proceeding with actually writing the minimal demo. So this minimal demo will slowly build up its capabilities um, throughout this tutorial series. All right, this is a quick peek of the chart that I presented on the building and cloning tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, just have a quick look if you want to refresh uh, your memory because I've discussed this fully in that video. Basically, we'll, we've looked at the application layer and the runtime layer and what's all involved in here. For this particular video, what I want to really focus on is this middle portion here, which is the communication between the application and the runtime. And it's actually what we're going to be coding today. And how does that look? For one end of it where our application actually sits is the OpenXR loader, which then communicates to the runtime end bit of it, which communicates back to the OpenXR loader. So the runtime is in charge of the actual XR hardware and communicates a logical representation of it to the application. The capabilities of the runtime can be extended by what we call API layers. This can be produced by various third parties. It can also add additional extensions that aren't available with the OpenXR runtime. OpenXR extensions are basically extensions to the OpenXR API. A good example of this is hand tracking as well as eye gaze tracking capabilities. So these are defined by OpenXR API extensions, not within the OpenXR API itself, at least not in the major version one that we're on right now while I'm recording this. All right, so these extensions, as I mentioned, can be either natively provided by the runtime or provided by an API layer. So now what we're really interested in at the moment is what happens or what goes on in this negotiation phase. So first, thing to note is we need to create an XR instance. It is uh, basically an object that maintains the OpenXR application state. This state is, can be physically located on the OpenXR loader or the runtime or the API layer. And once we've created the, the OpenXR instance, we could inspect the system for what the runtime name and version is, what the available API layers are, and the amalgamated supported extensions from both the runtime and the API layers. In the building video as well, we've discussed how to switch between runtimes and some tips and tricks um, around that. So if you haven't had a look at that, just have a quick peek if you're interested. And to create the OpenXR instance, um, we'll need to provide it with the application and engine name. We're not really using an engine here since we're writing in pure C++, we'll probably just use the OpenXR provider for the engine name. We'll have the, the provided with the application and engine version as well as the OpenXR API version that we're intending to use. So once we have the OpenXR instance, we need to grab the XR system. So this is basically the logical representation from the runtime of the actual XR hardware that's active at, at that precise moment that the user is using your application. And once you get the system, you can inspect it for the system name. Um, in this, for example, we've got Lighthouse for SteamVR, the graphics properties such as the swap chain dimensions that we'll need to use to render to, and the tracking capabilities, for example, whether the hardware actually has positional and or orientation tracking. And to get the XR system, we'll need to feed in the form factor that we actually want, which is either a head-mounted display or a handheld or a phone. In most current VR runtimes, it will be obviously a head-mounted display. As you can see, there's quite a bit going on in here, right? So with just the this bit of negotiation here, and there's quite a lot of code that is also involved in, in to actually write this initial negotiation phase. That's where the OpenXR provider comes in and helps us to code a little bit than you normally would with directly accessing the API, which is still possible, but we're going to be using the OpenXR provider here. We're just going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so first off, we'll create a subdirectory here for all of our source files. And let's create the CMake lists file as well as our starter code, which is main that CPP already. And let's create a minimal CMake list file here. What do we need? First off, we need to set the project and version. We need to ensure that we only use C17 onwards. 
find executable as well as copy the OpenXR provider DLL after we've done the build to the output directory or to the build directory. Okay, so we need project. Good day, OpenXR 0 0.10 for the version. And for the CXX standard, we need 17. And we need to set that required to true. All right, I'm using GitHub Copilot here, so I'm not sure why that's saying on, but it should be true, I think. All right, so we need add executable, the today open XR, as well as the first source code file. Now we need the target link library, so we need to link it to the OpenXR provider, as well as the Vulkan libraries. All right, so yeah, GitHub Copilot is sometimes useful, oftentimes annoying with its suggestions here. All right, so for the header files, we'll add the target include directories for Good day, OpenXR, and the include files are going to be in CMake source tier slash OpenXR underscore provider slash include. If I can type. As well as the Vulkan include directories. So I'm fairly certain that that's Vulkan include beers. So I'm not sure what GitHub Copilot is doing here, but it should be the IRS, I think. We'll find out in a sec once we do the build. All right, so we'll do, for the post build, we'll just copy the OpenXR provider DLL by creating an open, like adding a custom command. So this is pretty much it. It's done a good job here. So we just add copy underscore directory. And we're going to need this directory here, slash bin, because that's where we do the output for the OpenXR provider. And obviously, the target directory is going to be the current binary directory, which we could just use the CMake one for expediency here. Alrighty. Um, yeah, that looks good. Next up is the main um, CMake list. We we'll just simply add that set directory in that we just created. All right, easy, easy peasy. Now I'm just going to open a terminal and do a cmake dot dot. But what I want to do actually is not to build any of the other demos. We just want to build the ones that we're creating now. So dash D build provider only equals to on. So that'll prevent all of the other demos for building because we don't actually need it for this. Once it's done, we can just open this in Visual Studio. And we want to set the Gray Open XR project as our startup project. Cool. All right. So the single source file that we have. All right. So the only thing that we really need to do is include the Open XR provider header in here. And we should have access to all of the functionality of the OpenXR provider. And obviously, we'll need to create the entry point for our application. And GitHub Copilot created this. It, it's all right, but not quite, not quite that easy. So if you remember the slide that I just showed you earlier, um, we'll actually need to set up the application information and feed it into the OpenXR runtime. So we'll just create a struct called app instance info, and we'll just fill that in with the application name, 
In this case, it's Gray Open XR. Then we have the version. And we have a nifty tool here to create a 32 bit hash version, which is, we just set this up to 010. Then we'll add the engine name. We don't actually use a, an engine, but we can just say OpenXR provider as our engine here. And the version is, we can use the OpenXR provider's version. Major, minor, and then batch. Alrighty. Next up, we'll just need to create the actual OpenXR provider, an, an OpenXR provider where we can access the instance and the system. So I'm just going to create a unique pointer for it so I don't have to mess around with creating it and storing it properly. So just OXR provider, make unique, OXR provider. Let's add a debug log level, just log debug, so we can get a bit more information once it starts up. And let's initialize it. And that should be how easy it is. So GitHub Copilot is helpful here, except that that needs to be an address to the struct. All right, so then we test the result if there's if it's a success, we just want to show something on the console that that worked well. Although since this is not debug, we should be able to see a lot more info during the on the console itself. Right. Instance created. Let's clean that up and we should be able to start a build. And just run it. All right, so we can see that we've successfully created an instance. And the runtime has 25 available extensions. We've got an active instance, it's SteamVR OpenXR, and we've got a lighthouse system for tracking. And the supported V configuration is primary stereo, which stands for VR. All right, so if you actually want to have a look at what's going on behind the scenes, you can go to the OpenXR provider source code. And let's just have a look at the provider that's CPP in it here. And you could see all of these are the raw OpenXR API calls that we're making using the OpenXR provider that's CPP. We haven't actually lost any of the, uh, the flexibility of the OpenXR API. So if you go to the header file of, of the provider.hpp, you can see all of the functions here that we could use to tailor our app to what we need. And that's what we're actually going to be doing on the next video, which we're going to manipulate a little bit of the extensions. And we're going to talk a bit more about extensions there too. All right, so um, yep, see you there.